Good evening out there, folks. How's it going? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. May 24th, 2025 is the date. 10.08 p.m. local time, California time. Latest activity shows uh, looks like a little point nine out here in the green flag somewhere. Looks like California right there. Showing up. So let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. Also looks like some movement well off the uh, subduction zone here of the Caribbean. Uh, outside of St. George's Br Bridgetown area. That's an oddball quake if I've ever seen one. 4.96 miles deep. That is well off any subduction zone out there. Just kind of out uh, in this little fracture boundary, it looks like. Maybe around that, uh, what is that, seamount out there maybe? Potentially. Uh, again, I don't recall the last time we had any earthquake activity out there in that region of the Atlantic. Uh, historical data here, nothing being reported specifically in this region. As uh, far as anything above 4.5 and above since 1900 to 2015. A little bit of movement up north. Not so much here, so a little interesting movement going on there uh, just outside the um, Caribbean plate. All right, taking a look here at the states up into the Seattle area. I try to cover this all, at least every video here. I had a couple comments here mentioning why I don't cover Washington. Well, maybe you're not watching long enough here because I cover Washington State a lot. I cover this area a lot, pending there's earthquake activity. Uh, one earthquake well north of Seattle, well north of the Devil's Mountain Fault. Looks like a little two-pointer. Uh, 1.3 out there earlier, but for that, you know, for the rest of the state up there, it looks pretty quiet. Cascadia subduction zone has been amplified underneath the area recently, and uh, we've seen a handful of earthquakes up there uh, as far as that uh, trimmer activity goes, but looks like the trimmer has shifted down to the south again where it's been primarily focused there underneath Northern California and Southern Oregon. This is positioned right there into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. If we look back here over the last, oh, the last week or so, it's been pretty consistent here. Uh, we need to go back further than that because technically, it looks like it stirred up around the 7th of this month and the numbers are quite greater here. Look at that, over 10,000. We're at over 10,000 epicenters of trimmer now. Since uh, roughly about the 7th, a little bit back in the end of April there, but not so much. It's been highly consistent there, mainly to the southern end, a little bit up north around Seattle. That's why we have seen a little increase in movement across the Seattle Fault and various other areas out there. A little bit underneath Oregon, mainly focused down here across the southern end of the Cascadia. And uh, got to watch that. That could, uh, you know, obviously trigger maybe some larger earthquake activity upstream resulting in a partial rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone. And they actually happen in between regular intervals and the regular intervals of large earthquakes there, full ruptures occur on average between 250 and 500 years. So our last full rupture was 325 years ago. It's very possible we could see a partial rupture here of just the southern end due to all the earthquake activity happening recently in the past couple of years across the Blanco fracture zone, the Gorda Ridges, um, a lot of trimmer underneath this area. So it's gotta be highly straining this area, roughly about here, uh, just off the coast. Let's see, where's Coos Bay? Coos Bay right here, southward. I believe is where a partial rupture could occur up to a magnitude 8.4. And that's a thrust fault resulting in a tsunami for sure. Uh, you don't have to have a complete unzip for 9.0 or greater to see a tsunami. It may not be as big, but I guarantee you an 8.4 would uh, create a uh, not only a local tsunami there, but a distant Pacific wide tsunami. Uh, so watch that closely. It definitely uh, elevated out there. I mean, 10,000 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, out there across Mount Hood, some movement to the southwest there. Got a couple smaller earthquakes this morning um, over the last seven days or so. Well, maybe it's been longer than that. Yeah, we've got to go back to the last 30 days to see some of that activity up around Mount Hood. Nothing big going on. This is just uh, uh, some very small microquake activity. We've seen some up around Mount Rainier as well in the last 30 days. Uh, position up there at the summit. Um, not a whole lot there across Mount St. Helens, a little bit, but uh, occasionally, you know, we do see some earthquake activity out there. Nothing big going on. In fact, if you look, we can go over here to the volcanic seismicity map of Mount Hood and see what's going on there. They do have one local seismograph station there. 
uh, up at the top of Palmer Lift. Now, let's go back here and see. Yeah, see, sometimes this has uh, some errors on it. I really don't like that station. Let's see, and that one's even worse. So, let me see if I can find a different uh, local station. Maybe, maybe this one down here where this uh, activity is stirring up. Yoakum Ridge. Uh, there's a couple of the smaller earthquakes there. This is a very well-defined seismograph station there. You can see the seismograph digital reading with no interference. That's today's outlook or today's um, readings. Um, and this includes a portion of today and yesterday as well. A handful of smaller quakes out there. So, yeah, that's nothing of abnormal activity. I don't see any volcanic movement. This is all just probably fracture, uh, stress-related earthquake activity out there that's... Uh, can it happen can happen across the cascades here um, looking at the california area there's one earthquake off the southern end of the cascadia 2.6 this morning uh, no further movement out here across the dunnigan area this has been an area of interest with some uh, earthquake activity occurring on the great valley thrust fault here we've had a number of earthquakes looks like they've removed a couple of them um, yesterday we had I think one or two more on here. Now we only have, well, three earthquakes here. And uh, yeah, it looks like some of those earthquakes were removed. Now, whether uh, it was actually a legit earthquake or not, who knows? Um, but uh, they did pop up on the map there yesterday and this morning, and now they're gone. So only three earthquakes there, but it's still happening out here across the Great Valley Thrust Fault. Uh, that can produce some decent sized earthquakes. Very slow slip rate, but it has been known to produce large earthquakes there um, over a time period of probably a couple thousands of years or so, maybe more. And it's been uh, roughly probably around that time period at least since we had any major activity there. Uh, the Bay Area, pretty quiet, still nothing going on there. We got one earthquake outside of Concord, 1.5 earthquake this afternoon at 1.5 miles deep. Uh, the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, a number of two-pointers and some above 2.5. Uh, a couple other smaller microquakes in there as well. Nothing on the Parkfield segment of the San Andreas Fault, but I'm pretty certain that that's going to see a, at least a six-pointer here soon. And I say that because regular intervals occur every 20 to 22 years on that segment. And it's been since 2004, since the last six-pointer on that segment of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, got some uh, earthquake activity there in Southern California. Nothing big. One earthquake this morning on the uh, San Andreas Fault, the southern branch here for 2.6. Aside from that, a couple smaller microquakes around the region. Um, real quick, I want to show you guys here the earthquakes that have occurred since the 1st of January this year. Now, some folks wondering maybe if this is... Uh, a record-breaking year for earthquake activity. So let's break it down here real quick. This is just the number of earthquakes occurring each year on average, right? Of course, the magnitudes here, the higher magnitudes, we don't see 13,000 of them or, or even 100 of them. Um, we should at least see one eight-pointer on any given year out here. Our last one was back in 2001. So we're kind of playing with some time there for an eight-pointer. Uh, leads me to believe we could see a nine-pointer out here with the lack of eight-pointers here recently. Uh, 15, 7.0 to 7.9, and 130, 6.0 to 6.9. So where are we at right now? As of this date, May 24, 2025, we've had five seven-pointers, with the largest being a 7.7 .7 earthquake. We should see 15 of them. So we're at uh, just about not even halfway there we're in the month of may uh if we see a seven pointer uh for the rest of the year each month meaning 12 seven pointers well that puts us below average there for the number of seven pointers we should see on any given year so technically we are still behind in terms of the average number of earthquakes out here in certain magnitudes now for the six pointers go over here uh, 43 minus 5 here, that's going to leave us 38. 38 magnitude 6.0 to 6.9 earthquakes. And we should see, as I mentioned, 
130. So even at this level, we're almost halfway through the year, and we've only seen 38 6.0 to 6.9 magnitude earthquakes. Halfway through the year, we should see you know at least 60, and we're half of that. So we are technically well below average in terms of earthquake frequency out here of large magnitudes. That's just the facts here. Um, still waiting on an eight-pointer. That should stir up somewhere out here on the map. I uh, just don't know where or when, uh, but we do got to watch that. So I figured I would break that down for you guys. Um, you know, there's not an unrecord or a unprecedented amount of earthquake activity happening out here around the globe. Uh, over here in Iceland, yeah, there's actually quite a bit of earthquake activity stirring up here around the Reykjanes Peninsula. Peninsula, let's see what we got here for the Iceland uh, earthquake map. We'll run over here and check this out. Uh, this is the last 12 hours, and that's still a decent amount, 382. Uh, mostly down here across the rift boundary. Some, uh, well, not so much stretching up to, into the uh, Svartsingi area, but a little rift zone out here, and then southward, seeing a number of earthquakes. If we look back here at the last, oh, 16 hours, well, that brings it up to almost 600 earthquakes out here. So that's an unprecedented amount of earthquake activity occurring in a short amount of time period out here across the rift boundary. So things should stir up out here in terms of further volcanic movement here soon right now the area across the um, savart singi region is uh, continuing to build some inflation or uh, inflation continuing out here across grindavik northward what this will do to it we'll have to watch here in the coming days as far as any elevated volcanic activity but that is a decent swarm of earthquakes there up into Alaska, a handful of smaller quakes. Nothing normal. I mean, nothing of abnormal activity. Everything normal. Uh, one earthquake up here deep into the Kuril Kamchatka Trench underneath Russia this morning, a four-pointer. Uh, let's take a look here at the earthquake 3D globe. Got the typical crunch zone going on here across the Indonesia Islands area, Philippines. A lot of activity there. But that is very common on any given day. That, that happens every single day out there with a bunch of threes and fours and fives. That's nothing new. That's a daily event out there. Imagine having to live with that every single day. That'd be crazy. But it's where all the plates subduct and meet and collide, and it's just a, a very dynamic area out there with high-frequency earthquakes. Uh, down here across New Zealand, getting quite a bit of uptick as well. Remember yesterday I said to watch for this area. I was going to move, and we are definitely starting to move underneath this region following that six-pointer over here. Uh, I believe it was early, was it early yesterday or the day before? Uh, this six-pointer down here, that was on the, uh, yeah, yesterday, early yesterday. Uh, and then an immediate 5.3 up north. And that uh, looks like it's starting to impact this area here across New Zealand. With some threes, a four, even a five point, it looks like there's a... Let me bring these up here a little bit. There's at least a, a four-pointer. Almost looked like it was a five-pointer, but there's definitely a handful of deep earthquakes out there as well. Looks mainly a, like a lot of deep earthquake activity. Uh, we'll run over and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick. And, uh, oh, not GeoPhysics. GeoNet, there we go. And see what we have out here. A lot of these from yesterday because these are all, well, yesterday their time they're already in um in uh, sunday uh, but it looks like yeah there's a lot of activity underneath the north island region uh, probably could have something to do with the hikarangi but some of these are actually very very shallow as well maybe around that uh, super volcano talpo super volcano looks like a lot of activity here in the last couple hours directly in that location at about five kilometers deep that would uh that could be some um, magma activity down there there's a 4.0 really deep underneath this region uh let's take a look here at the seismograph stations here see what we have um across the area now taupo super volcano that's going to be right uh right here some of these earthquakes underneath this area are super deep. It doesn't look like, well, maybe some of the smaller quakes are showing up here, but they're very small. Just barely being picked up there. 
um, across that area of the uh, Taupo Super Volcano. There's that four pointer showing up a little bit better on this station, but uh, you know things are starting to stir up here in the last few hours. So we do got to watch that uh, area of New Zealand because it, right now it looks like that's a hot spot of earthquake activity out here across the region. Uh, so just be on guard. bunch of a bunch of deeper activity. It's some shallow adjustment going on there t uh, as well within the last couple hours. Uh, five pointer way up into Russia it looks like, and the 4.3. Uh, let's see what else we got. There's a little odd one there across Africa, 4.4. Yeah, it's still got a swarm of activity there across Iceland. And uh, I guess we'll just kind of watch things here, see what plays out. Uh, space weather activity, did you hear we had an X-flare? That's actually a little surprising. Wasn't counting on any X-flare activity out here. But it uh, happened. Not a huge X-flare, but it looks like an X1.12. That's going to be off of this sunspot over here. It looks like it's still currently flaring. Uh, and if I remember right, that's the region that we talked about this morning. Uh, in fact, I noted how this area quickly uh, evolved overnight to where it's at right now, even further evolving into terms of in the in the terms of sense of complexity, magnetic complexity. So that's uh, yeah, it grew quite nicely there, producing that uh, X flare. 4098. Uh, I'm almost certain that's where it came from. Yep, 4098. X1.1. So you can see these areas really start to pick up here, uh, you know, during a 24 or 12 hour time image. Like this one here is from uh, this morning, I believe. If you look here now, a little bit more deeper, dark, darker colors starting to trail each other. So that looks like it's starting to expand into a, a decent sized sunspot here. And we'll continue to uh, throw off flares. It looks like uh, there's been a couple other C flares leading up to that M flare, or leading up to the X flare, so that will remain a threat there uh, while it's still in the Earth-directed view for some uh, stronger flaring. Now the direction of that sunspot, I don't think it produced any CME. It was more of an impulsive event, very sharp on the um, on the imagery here. Whenever there's a CME that's produced, most of the time it will pop up to the X flare level or whatever flare level it's at, and then be kind of thick here, uh, indicating a, a CME that was um, uh, exploded along with that um, flare. But I don't think there was any. But uh, we'll watch here in the coming days, see if the uh, Space Prediction Center, Space uh, Space Weather Prediction Center folks there uh, update anything far as CME activity. But I don't think there was one but could see some more here we'll have to watch that sunspot uh, and that's about the only one that I'm watching right now as far as any uh, decent flaring all these other sunspots here just kind of withering away one region back here uh, looks a little complex there we'll watch that maybe uh, tomorrow morning we'll get a little bit better perspective of it nothing major going on there for the auroras and uh, yeah just kind of keep an eye on things here tonight, folks. See how uh, everything plays out. Hope everyone enjoys their Saturday night. We will see you guys back out here uh, for the Sunday morning update. I'm a little bit tired, a little bit beat up. Went to the uh, Chico Fair here in Northern California. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fun riding those uh, amusement park rides. But, man, and not like it was when I was a lot younger. And I could easily ride uh, the Ring of Fire and, and all the other upside-down rides. But, uh, oh, man, it, it's it definitely a lot different here as I'm older. Not as fun. <laughs> More or less like I can't wait for it to be over. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call it a night, folks. Have a good one. We will see you guys back out here for the Sunday morning update. Uh, one lonesome earthquake. I always get worried about these here that happen directly on the San Andreas Fault. That's pretty much locked and loaded for an 8.1. Always got to watch that because, you know, is it going to be this one right here that triggers the 8.1 earthquake, right? Imagine that. This is the famous guy right here. 0. 0.7 at 2213 hours on a Saturday night that triggered the 8.1. I'm not saying it's going to, but you just never know. That's why I say I always get a little bit nervous there when I see activity directly on the San Andreas Fault like that. Anyway, be prepared, folks. We will catch you guys out here tomorrow morning. Uh, enjoy uh, your evening.